Uh, I have a question about radiometric dating. Um, about what? Radiometric dating okay. uh, concerning uh, rocks and ages and fossil ages. I know they use uh, a lot of interesting methods, um, rubinium strontium mm -hmm. and other to date rocks, and then they use C14 for fossils, mm -hmm. but they often reveal inflated ages, mm -hmm. even C14, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you explain that, and is there a way to accurately date rocks and fossils? Okay. Uh, when we talk about something, when we talk about how old something is, that's not a science question, it's a history question. Can you use science to make a guess about it? Yes. Uh, can you infallibly measure an age of something scientifically? No, can't do it. Uh, what about radiometric dating? Radiometric dating, there are certain atoms that are unstable. They will spontaneously change into other atoms. Uh, uranium, lead, uh, potassium, argon, rubidium, strontium, several others. So uh, let's take potassium, argon. Pota the potassium atom, um, it, a certain variety of it is radioactive, and so it'll change into argons. There, there's other pathways too, it's complicated. Argon's a gas and it can leak through the system. So the idea is you measure the amount of parent to daughter element and, that, and, and we know the rate at which that happens today. You can think of one element changing into another like sand going from the top chamber to the bottom chamber in an hourglass. Okay, and you can use that to tell time. Makes sense. If you knew the initial conditions if I had an hourglass in here, if you all came into the room and it was halfway done, I said, how long ago do you think I turned that over? He said, well, it's an hourglass, it's halfway done, half an hour. And I said, I gotcha, because in fact, I turned it over one minute before you went into the room, but already a lot of the sand was in the bottom chamber. You can't assume that all the sand was in the top chamber. With potassium argon, you can't assume that there was no argon in the original rock. People assume that because they think, well, it's a gas and it can bubble through. Yeah, but it, 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 can, it can be trapped in there as well. So radiometric dating is supposed to tell you when the rock hardened, but it's based on assumptions that you know the initial conditions and that you know the rate at which things change. Now today, the rate of most radioactive substances is very constant, and that's why the secularists like to use that method and because it gives them an answer they like. There are, there are hundreds of other processes that give them answers they don't like, and they don't tend to use those. Um, but with radiometric dating, uh, sometimes it gives them answers they like, sometimes it doesn't. We took rocks from Mount St. Helens, for example, brand new rocks just formed, and we sent them in to have them radiometrically dated, which normally you would not do because it's expensive. Why would you date a rock that you already know the age of it? We wanted to check the method. And the rocks came back with ages of hundreds of thousands of years on rocks that are brand new. They're less than 20 years old. Mount, well, Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, and then within a few years, they, they did this experiment. They sent those rocks off. That's not an isolated incident. You take rocks from Hawaii, you send them in to get get them dated, you'll get millions of years, even though they're brand new. So radiometric dating has been shown to not work on rocks of known age. It's assumed to work on rocks of unknown age. Uh, carbon dating is a little better. Carbon dating, at least, it tends to give answers that are ballpark within the biblical time scale, but it sometimes gives inflated ages too. And the reason we think that is, is because it assumes that the C14 at, in the atmosphere has been constant throughout time, and it hasn't. We would expect as creationists that that has built up over time. I, I've been actually doing some research on that myself in terms of the, the fluctuation of the Earth's magnetic field and the decay of the Earth's magnetic field, uh, how, how would that influence C14 production? It's kind of interesting. But uh, we would expect that if you, uh, we, we think that there was only about two to five percent the amount of C14 in the atmosphere before the flood that there is today. And if you don't compensate for that, you'll get carbon estimated ages that are about 10 times older than the true age, which is exactly what we find. If you, if you get something that's from the flood year and you have it carbon dated, you'll get 50,000 years instead of 5,000. So it really, it really makes sense. It's kind, of, it's kind of interesting. That was more in depth than any of you wanted, wasn't it? Okay. <laughs> any others? Billions. For example, carbon dating. A lot of people think carbon dating gives the millions of years, but you're misinformed if you think that, because it doesn't. Uh, carbon dating is our friend. It, it doesn't always give the right answer, but it, it gives answers that are much closer to the biblical time scale than the secular time scale. Uh, it's based on carbon-14. Most carbon is carbon-12, okay? But there's a variety of it called C-14, carbon-14, has two extra neutrons in the nucleus, and that makes it unstable. It will spontaneously change into nitrogen. All by itself, you don't have to do anything. C14 will just pop, change into nitrogen uh, randomly. But when you have a large sample of them, you can tell statistically uh, after a certain amount of time that they'll have decayed. And we find C14 in diamonds, diamonds that secularists believe to be one to two billion years old. But the half-life of C14 is 5,700 years. It can't last millions of years. 
If the entire earth were nothing but C14, after one million years, you'd not have one atom of it left. It would all have decayed into nitrogen. And so, uh, yeah, it, the fact that we find this deep down in the earth where there's no way to get new, it, it, cosmic rays can't penetrate that far down, so it, there's no way to get new C14 in there. Apparently, they're just thousands of years old. We find dinosaur fossils, same thing, as C14 in them. Isn't that interesting? They're not millions of years old, they're thousands of years old.